Hi guys, this is Dr. Neda with Keys of Health. I hope you're doing well and taking good care of yourself. A study was recently published in which researchers found microplastics in human blood. It is concerning, disturbing, but unfortunately not surprising. And it is very important and relevant topic for us, so I encourage you to please listen to the very end. Plastic has become such a common part of our lives in the last few decades, it's almost unavoidable. We didn't really know what it was going to do, and we're finally now beginning to see the full effect of it. It is significantly important when it comes to male fertility. It actually has negative impacts on testosterone and semen health. But that is a topic for another video. If you would like me to cover this topic, please drop me a line in the comment section below, and I will surely do that. So going back to our topic, what are microplastics? Microplastics are tiny plastic particles that sneak into um, almost anything and anywhere on Earth. Scientists have found them from near the peak of Mount Everest to the deepest trenches in Earth. And now they have found it in people's blood and even baby poop. Virtually every piece of plastic created since the 19th century still exists today on Earth. Plastics exist for at least 500 years before decomposing. Now we know we have a problem. Let's talk about what we should do about it to protect ourselves and our families, especially young children. The most commonly found plastic polymer is the one that is used in disposable water bottles and by extension all drinks including soda, juices and things like that. The second most common is the one that is used for food packaging and polystyrene foam which we commonly know as styrofoam. Styrofoam is actually expanded polystyrene foam. Polystyrene is a plastic that is often used to make clear products like food packaging. So two things pop out right away. First, it is plastic that is mostly involved with things we consume, like food. Second, it is single time use plastic. But that's not it. People can also be exposed to microplastics through air, water, clothing, and personal care products like toothpaste, lip gloss, dental polymers, implants, or even tattoo ink residue. The um, authors of the study asked some very valid questions like where is it going in our body? Can it be eliminated or excreted? Or is it uh, retained in certain particular organs? Is it able to pass the blood-brain barrier? More research is definitely needed to answer these questions, but we can't wait for further research to do something about it. So let's talk about what we should do about this and how to reduce the exposure to these microplastics. As I mentioned earlier, babies and young children are more vulnerable to chemicals and particle residue and uh, exposure and microplastics can pass through the placenta into the bloodstream of the unborn child. So how can we reduce exposure? First, be aware and make a conscious effort to eliminate plastic from your life as much as possible because plastic production is expected to rise uh, actually doubled by 2040. So unless we reduce the use and thereby demand decreases, it's not going anywhere. There are some very practical things you can do to reduce day-to-day -day exposure. Choose glass and stainless steel drink and food storage containers. Don't buy styrofoam anything. Cups, plates, takeaway containers, anything. Buy your own glass or stainless steel cups for takeaway coffee. Paper cups also have plastic lining. Choose clothing made of natural fibers as such as cotton and bamboo. Avoid nylon, polyester, and acrylic materials since plastic is involved in the production. Bring your own bags for shopping and avoid supermarket produce and shopping bags. They are wreaking havoc on the environment and our health. Avoid microwaving in general, but especially avoid using plastic containers in microwave. Avoid single-use bottled water. Get a nice quality stainless steel water bottle. It will last you for a very long time and it is much healthier. 
ensure that your vacuum cleaner has a HEPA filter. And if you can, invest in a high quality air purifier with HEPA filter. You can be proactive and request small businesses in your lo locality to go plastic free. These initiatives are already being taken in some places and make sure you encourage or, and support those businesses that are taking those initiatives. We are responsible for our health. We need to take charge. Consumers have the ability to drive the market. The first step in that direction is to raise awareness. Talk to your friends, your family, your local businesses, schools to educate the youth about it. And you can start by sharing this video. I have provided the link to the study in the about section of this video, and I encourage you to read it. I hope you found this video informative. I am very hopeful that together we can make a push in the right direction. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and show me some love by liking the video. See you soon with another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.